If you could play a world champion, who would it be? Would it be the first official world champion Steinitz or the latest one, Ding Liren? Would you play the first unofficial world champ in Paul Morphy or who many consider the greatest of all time, Magnus Carlsen? Today, you can play one of nine world champions using Chess.com's new bots to see if you can match with the best of the best. Let's see how I, National Master Sean Lei, can handle it. The world champion we're going to be facing today is Paul Morphy. The first being, he's the weakest of these nine world champions, as he was the world champion like 200 to 300 years ago, which is quite a bit of time for someone to be really good at chess. And also because I think my playstyle is the best to play against Paul Morphy, as he is somebody who is very aggressive, and perhaps some of his um, sacrifices might not be very sound, which gives me an opportunity to take advantage. So let's see if we can win in these positions. So... I'm going to play d4. I'm going to play my colleague Zukator. This is one of my favorite openings of all time. It's an opening where I know I can be very defensive and I know that I can defend against most of my opponent's strategies. So again, the first few moves don't really matter. That's one of the beauties of the colleague Zukator is you kind of can do whatever you want as long as you follow the basic opening principles as I am doing here. And eventually I'm going to get my knight to e5. I'm going to get my knight to d2. I'm going to castle, play pawn f4. And we're going to have a nice position here. So in this position, c5 makes a lot of sense. That is the move you want to play. And here, I think I need to play knight e5 right away instead of castling due to the fact that if he plays queen c7, I can never really play um, pawn f4 because my knight's on f3. So, okay. So in this position, I'm pretty confident here. And wow, my opponent plays this really strange move. To me, it just seems like this might be a free piece. Um... I think it's a free piece. I mean, it looks like it's a free material. Perhaps we will be taken advantage of here. So let's go see what happens. Perhaps he's trying to play f6. I guess this is something that he can play. But can, do I not have queen h5 here? Queen h5, he takes here, to captures queen, bishop g6, queen h7 looks like mate. Now, what if he plays pawn g6? So if I play here, plays pawn g6, what if just knight takes? This looks pretty good for me so let's see if this works i think i'm going to play queen h5 here it looks very strong in this position it might force my opponent to play pawn f5 and pawn f5 is extremely weakening here like look at this pawn structure this cannot be good for my opponent so in this position i would say um dare i say i'm already completely winning against a 2600 rated bot that is paul morphy now in this position, he checks me, which is quite annoying because I'm not able to castle my king anymore. But it's not too much of a problem due to the fact that, well, it's not like my king is going to be attacked here on the king side over here. So, okay, Paul Morphy wants to trade off pieces. I'm down because I'm up material, so I will take. It's not a mistake here. And I'm just going to play knight to f3. I'm going to defend my pawn on d4. Like, this pawn structure looks a little strange for my opponent. Now... It looks like he's putting up the pressure now, like he's threatening to play something like knight e5 check, which can be very annoying in my position, to be honest, and it's not something I want to deal with. Also, the fact that my queen is kind of in nowhere land is not great. So let's play my queen to h3. Maybe we can loop it around over here. And in this position, I can capture, and if I move my knight away, then he'll capture on d4. And I'm not really having the best of times here. So I think in this position, I just have to move my king away, perhaps to e2. And while this doesn't look pretty, in this position, our opponent doesn't have a way right away to just take advantage of, well, a sad position here. I think my opponent might be trying to play bishop c6 or something. Maybe he's trying to play bishop, well, can't play bishop b5, but maybe he's trying to play bishop c6. Now, I have an interesting idea. I could try to open up the king side even more with a move like pawn g4 and maybe just try to get a rook into the game to attack the opponent's king. But that feels extremely weakening in this position. It's not something that I am too interested in. Perhaps we can play something like rook d1, just play defensively here, defend all my pieces, make sure my opponent cannot take advantage of any of these um, weaknesses that I have. Now, in this position, my opponent immediately jumps onto the opportunity to take advantage of my weaknesses because in this position, I have a problem. Knights to c3 check is very, very deadly for me. Also, the fact that he's threatening my f4 pawn, which is not great for me. So I don't like this too much for me. Um, my position all of a sudden went from what I think was very good to very not so good in this position. Now, do I give the exchange here? Do I play knight e5 and just say, hey, I'll give you the exchange. I don't really care. 
um, but it improves my position a lot. I think I will try to do that. I think I'm going to give up the exchange here. I don't really care about this exchange. And the idea here, wow, my opponent doesn't care about it either, it seems. This is very interesting. Huh. Now here he's probably going to do some silly check and then invade my position. But if he's not going to take my exchange, I think I'm going to be extremely greedy here. And I'm going to try to keep as much um, material as possible here. And here I probably need to do some calculations like rookie one. What happens if he does a random check like 94 check? What do I do in that position? Now in that position, maybe I can try sacrifice, pawn captures, bishop captures, queen c3 check. And I've played king e2. He cannot take my rook because this mating threat. So he has to play something like g6. Um, and g6, I play pawn c4. I, I feel like that position is not bad for me. My material, like, I, I might be down material. Actually, it'll be equal material because I'm up a pawn here. But it doesn't actually seem that bad due to the fact that I have very good pieces. And this piece over here is really, really, really bad. Okay, so our opponent here is threatening to come down here, which is annoying. He's also threatening to take my f4 pawn, which is not great for me. Now, what if I take on d7? I could defend both. Um, take here, play pawn g3 is an idea. Or I could play queen f3. Now, if I play queen f3, the idea here by my opponent is he will play queen f3 check and perhaps take my d4 pawn. But the more I think about it, can I not just win the d7 pawn there? My dark squares are extremely weak here, which is not something too great about my position here. But I do think I do need to bring my pieces back in here. If I play queen to f3 um, and he plays queen to c3 check, I play king here. Does he have any checks here that are really annoying? Knight f4 doesn't work. Queen takes d4. Again, knight takes d7. Oh, but what if he plays the in-between move knight takes f4, exposing my knight here? And then if I move king to f1... Maybe take your in-between move? No, that doesn't work because queen takes. So he cannot take there because I will just take on f4. This is actually some wild calculations. In the real game, I would probably have to think like a long time here in order to make sure like my move is safe here because there's a lot of opportunities for my opponent to be annoying, like extremely annoying. I even have moves like bishop c4 I can be thinking about here. Like I didn't even think about bishop c4 yet, but bishop c4 actually doesn't look too bad here. But the idea, if he takes on f4, um, maybe I can kick his knight away with a move like queen here. Where does his knight go? And then e6 is going to be weak because I threaten knight takes d7, bishop takes e6. Now that looks very interesting in that position actually. Bishop c4, knight takes f4, queen to f3. Does our opponent have any in-between moves that are annoying? I don't think so. Maybe g5 is a move he could play and then he gets his pawn back. But b3 and g3 just kicking his knight away again. This doesn't look too bad. Unless I'm hallucinating, because his knight cannot move because of the threat of knight takes d7, bishop takes e6. And yeah, okay, so in this position, oh, did I miss that he can play b5? And the idea is if I capture him, I'm in a little bit of trouble here due to the fact that he has queen takes c2 because my bishop's not defending it anymore. Now that is interesting. Now I take queen takes c2, I have to play here, and in rook c3, I'm cooked. Yeah, that's not good. Now, what if I played this in-between move? I let him take here, then he takes here, and I move knight to c5. I might have to do something like this. This isn't something I want to do, but it looks like it's something I have to do. Okay, opponent plays this in-between move over here. He decides to take us um, on f4 with his queen. That is interesting. And if I move the king anywhere that's not like d4, then he can just take. And that that is annoying here. Um, Like, this is... Very spooky here. Um, I think I have. if I move king here, it might be my only move here. Because, well, here, just knight c3. Eh, knight c3 is not that bad, to be honest. Now, in this position, again, my opponent's giving up material here. In this position, my position doesn't look very good. So I think I have to capture it, even if it might not be the best move. My opponent plays rook to c6. Interesting. Not sure what rook c6 does. I guess it defends the pawn here. Um... Now, if I play queen f3, can I come back and defend everything? Queen f3. He doesn't have any checks. He can take on d4. And then he's threatening this. So what if I play rook 
D1. I, I'm actually so happy he took here. This can't be good. He also lets me take on h7, but I feel like that's a trap because it doesn't really do anything. Because check, check, check. King captures, obviously. Queen check. King here lets queen takes g7, which can't be good for him. So if I check, king takes queen h7 here, and I check over here, and then he starts running like king to e7. Is my queen better placed on h4 or f or h3 h5 or h3 is the question here now this is quite peculiar um there's a lot of things i can do here i can even play pawn b4 here just giving up the pawn and saying i don't care about my pawn um if you because what i care more about is keeping the c file closed in this position like this is actually so interesting here i'm not sure what i need to do here um i could just play knight here and be the greediest person ever and just try to keep all my material but that does can't seem good. Okay, take, take, check, queen f7 here, king e7. I don't have any more checks there. Um, but do I like it more that his king is on e7? And then I can play something like queen f3 offering the trade. I could play queen f3 offering the trade right away. It's actually so complicated. Queen f3, where does he go? Take on d4. Yeah, we already mentioned that. Take on d4. We play something like rook d1 and he has knight c3, which is annoying. So what if, in this position, we play rook d1 immediately in this position, defend d4, but then I have to be scared of a move like pawn takes um, b3 and then opening up the c file here, which is not good for me either. Hmm. Luckily, I do have infinite time here, um, which means I can think for as long as I want. Yeah, in a real game, this would be... A, probably a game that i would think i'm better to be honest and i would probably need to think for quite a bit a long time but in the end i would think this position is not bad for me like i'm honestly thinking upon before it looks so strange but it's a move that defends a lot of the threats my opponent's going for and it does seem to keep my king a little bit safer so i don't see anything wrong with pawn b4 it, it just gets rid of all the annoying stuff. But what if I just play queen f3 with the idea of if he takes on d4, I just play king f1 and say, hey, my king is safe now. What are you going to do? Like, to be honest, that doesn't seem that bad either. You know what? Let's just play the safe route. This is the scaredy cat route. We're also stopping our opponent's knight from moving here. So in here, I cannot play rook here, obviously. Actually, I probably can because this rook is pinned. Ah. So many calculations I need to do here, to be honest. But I think just king e1 is the safest move in this position. Um, just making sure my king is safe, not letting th anything strange happen to my pieces. Um, yeah, this move is probably forced by my opponent. But in this position, I get to move out my pieces extremely quickly. I'm only down a pawn for the exchange, which has to be good for me, to be honest. Um, he moves the king all the way back, the queen all the way back. e6 looks funny. Yeah, in this position, I still can't castle, which is annoying, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, in this position, it's, it's actually hard for me to actually come up with anything to do here. So if I take, ah, it doesn't quite work. Now, if I play g3 with the idea of putting the king on g2, that's definitely an idea we can go for. I'm not really scared of his knights or rooks anymore in this position, to be honest. Um, what if we take, rook takes queen a3 check. That looks pretty fun, but doesn't seem to do much except create weaknesses on my end. Yeah, this is... This is strange. This is a very strange position here. Um, I'm just thinking of exchange sacrifices because that's what I love to do. Like just rook takes, pawn takes, queen takes. The opponent's king is exposed. F5 is weak. Um, but do I have anything there to be honest? Looks interesting. Looks like I could get a draw there for sure. But I'm not looking for a draw here. I'm trying to win because I think I'm like in that position. I think I'm doing quite fine actually. Um... Rook takes looks so interesting. It looks like something I would play in this position. What if rook takes e6 with the idea of after rook captures, queen captures here? Uh, again, this doesn't look like it amounts to much. It just looks like we're going into a drawn endgame. Like maybe I might be up. No, I won't be up material there. What if I just play something normal? What if I just play rook to e5? And just say, I'm going to double up here. What are you going to do about it, Paul Murphy? Ninety rookie five, he captures. I have to capture back with C-pawn. Um, 
And then he plays rook c2. I play rook here. Am I scared of any checks? No, I'm scared of his just rook being on the c-file. That's something I should be scared about. But I can take on e6. Is that that bad for me? It looks not bad. It looks good for me. Rook e5 with the idea of just playing very passive rook to e7. Uh, rook to e5, rook to e1. But the problem is against these computers, like if it looks so simple, it definitely cannot be that simple, right? But then again, it's pawn morphy, which isn't the strongest spot in the world. Take on e5, pawn captures, queen captures, just leads to, I think, the draw shen game ever. But I won't lose against a 2600, which is not bad. But rook e5 gives me potential to go for more. Rook e5, am I scared of anything? I'm just looking and I don't see anything. Maybe because I'm blind, but... I'm just scared of pawn takes, pawn captures rook c2. But I just play rook e1, he takes a2, I take e6. That can't be good for him. Rook e5 takes, takes rook c2, rook here, knight c7, playing a passive move that defends everything. Now that is an idea. No, but then I have rook takes e5, rook takes f5, queen takes f5. And then take the rook on c2. Uh, rook e5 just looks strong. Let's just play rook e5. So if he does this, I capture back with the c-pawn. This is what we calculated. He plays rook c3. Okay. Rook c3 is interesting. Um, is it interesting? Is this move good? Queen f2. He captures, I capture, rook c2 check. I cannot play rook e2 because then capture, capture, knight c3 check, and I'm down a pawn in that endgame, which is not good. But if I play here and he takes, takes rook c2, and I just move king up, he takes a2, I take over here. That cannot be good for him. So he has to play king f7. Um, then I play rook e6. I mean, rook e8. I don't know. Looks not bad. But if I play this, he has knight e3 check is his idea here. Ah, my dark squares are too weak here. Knight e3 check, king g1 captures, r queen captures, rook captures. I think I have to play queen f2 here. What if I just play queen e1, then can he not just take advantage of the piece? What if I play rook d3, actually? Rook d3, let him come down and check. That might be the best idea here. It's not a good idea, but it is an idea that I can play. And then can I just go back and forth? Knight checks, rook check, capture, capture. Trade off all the pieces. It looks like a draw, so we have to move rook back. But if we move rook back, yes, take, take, king here, queen, queen g1. Okay, let's play rook e1. This is like a very passive way of playing things. He'll probably play queen g1 check, which is pretty aggressive move. I can block here. Um, but what if I just move king here and just try to run my king around? I need to be careful that there's no random checks here, but there's no random checks. My opponent's trying to win this guy over here, which is annoying. But what if I take now? Take, take, take. And then he has infinite checks against my king, but I also have infinite checks against his king. Um... This is interesting. What if I just play pawn a4 and just say, hey, you don't get any of my pawns here. Then queen b2 check and I just move king away. Does he have anything? Doesn't look like it. You know what? Let's just play the greediest person ever. Just win more material and say, I don't care about what you're trying to do here. I'm just going to be greedy. I'm just going to win all the material and I will try to hold as much material as possible. And if you want to draw, you want to draw, you know? If I play here, knight c3, no, it doesn't work. Knight f4 works, so I cannot play here. If I play king f2, um, what checks does he have? He has a queen c2, but then I may move king to g3. And we just escape, right? It's easy to calculate when there's not that many pieces on the board, but my opponent is just being cringe here with the checks. Now, do we just go back and forth? Do we just play king e1 and just let him go back and forth and we get a draw? I mean, it's a possibility. I think I am winning here, though. But I do need to make sure my king is safe. Otherwise, I cannot really say I'm winning because, well, my king's not safe. Um, 
because if I play something like King F1, Queen check, Queen D1, Knight E3, like that's so annoying. My dark squares are so weak here. Now I can play the super risky King G3 move. And the reason why that's risky is because I'm putting my king in ultimate danger there. And I don't think I have very good follow up there. But I keep the material. I'm up a pawn against the Paul Morphy bot. And really, what do we have here? Hmm. Like, what can we do in this position? H4 and try to hide our king there. Now, if we play king here, he can't play e5, but he can check. Can't play e5. King g3, queen check, king here. Oh, I can't even do that. Because if I play here, queen check, um, and I play king h3, then knight f4, and I get forked over here, which is not great. Um, wow. Did it, is our opponent going for a draw here? Like, if we go back here, is he just going to go back and forth? Let's go see. What is our opponent going to play here? No, he doesn't go back and forth. He doesn't want to draw. Interesting. He's just keeping our king unsafe here. A4. What if we play something like h3 here? We're just going to keep our king safe. And we're going to keep that pawn safe. I don't like the fact that my king's not on a good square. Let's play king here or something. King f1. We're going to slowly get our pieces into good squares. Um, the problem is in this position, I can't play queen here, can I? Check. Queen here. Check. Yeah, let's offer the trade. The trade is not bad here. My opponent does that. We're slowly getting a piece to our king to safety here. Our king can go to g1 now where it's safe. Well, relatively safe. He still has queen c1 check, which is so annoying. Not something I want to deal with. Opponent lets us give him a little check here. We'll give him a little check. Be a little bit annoying to him, just as he's being annoying to us. Um, rook to d1. Just make sure he has no checks ever again. Looks very passive, but keeps things safe. Now, if I play here instead, queen c1 king h2 what i always recommend is keeping your your pieces as centralized as possible here which we're doing um the more centralized your pieces are the easier it is for you to you know fight um if i play queen here he'll play queen there that is annoying now he's going to keep pushing his pawns up which is fine don't see much of a problem here now if i play queen here he has rook d1 uh, queen c1 like, it's so annoying. His queen is so annoying, and I don't have many checks against him. What if I just play rook d1 and just say, you know what? I'm just going to stop all your checks forever and ever. I'm not going to let you do anything silly. I'm not going to do let you do anything not fun against me. He plays that, so he can play, like, I don't know, queen here, I guess. Uh, so he stops my queen there. And what do we do now? Now, if we play queen e5, he'll probably do nothing. Uh, Probably just sit around. Let's just play queen e5. Looks like a strong move. No discovery attacks here against my king. Um, my opponent is... Okay, he's playing something like this. Now we can play king h2, so there's no queen b6 check in the future. But there's queen c7. Um, no better defender than someone with a law degree, Paul Murphy says. It's, is what it is. Um, all right, king h2. Let's uh, defend here. Okay, now he offers a trade. Now, in this position, I actually have rook takes knight, pawn takes, queen takes, and uh, and and then takes on a4. But that looks drawish, but it looks like my best bet. I take here, he checks. I play queen takes here, stopping queen e1 check in the future is the idea. Oh, but then he has queen d6. And then queen d6, king g1 king h2 and it looks like a draw is there anything better i can go for probably not let's just take it if he wants to draw he can take the draw um i just move back here i move back here let's see if he takes my pawn and he wants to draw so now we can calculate for the rest of this position if we play king g1 queen here king here queen check here king here Queen check, king here. Are we getting out of there? We might, actually. Due to the fact that his king's in a really bad position. King g1, queen check, king here. Queen has to check here. 
or I guess you can check here, but then I come here, queen check, here, check. Ah, uh, no, it just doesn't seem good enough. Let's just go for the draw. If your opponent wants to draw, he can take the draw. He wants to check us here, that's fine. Um, if we play here, he checks here, and then we go back to the same position. We move back here. And it's a draw. So we managed to get a draw against the weakest spot, which is not great, to be honest. But let's take a look at the game review. Alrighty then. So in the analysis, so as you guys can see over here, it said I played with the 85.4% accuracy. I played like a 2700, which surprises myself. But that's what the opening kind of can get you. It just lets you play like a 2700 against these super strong bots. And while we got a draw and our opponent didn't play very well, he only played like a 2450, which isn't great. I mean, it says his rating is 2600. And then there, there were a lot of positions here which said that we could have won. So let's go see what happens. So the opening is just very simple. These positions, you always have a slight advantage as white. You could be brain dead and you could still play this very, very easily. And as you guys can see in this position, like we got a good position, 0 0.36. I know what to play in these positions, very easy to play. And then my opponent gives me a free pawn, which is interesting. Now it says f6 is a mistake and it says that I'm completely winning here. Now I probably missed some sacrifice. Is it a sacrifice? Please don't tell me it's a sacrifice. Um, Actually, I don't see a sacrifice. What is the move? It says queen h4 is missed. It says, let's see what the best move is instead. Queen d3, what in the world? Pawn captures take queen here. I guess this keeps the queen in the attack, unlike what I did with queen h5. It isolated the queen side. So if he plays f5, then queen f3, and the same thing happened as in the game, but my queen's in a way better position than h3. Wow, okay. This is definitely an interesting move. I definitely missed that. Now, queen h5 is what it is. It says this is fine. King f2 is excellent, it says. That makes sense. He puts a lot of pressure on me. Knight f3. Now, it preferred I played queen e2, giving up the pawn back, which definitely I think it might be a better idea because my queen did get trapped, and it, it was not great. Um, okay, so queen h3, the position is completely equal, it says. In this position, we played all good moves. King e2, we didn't blunder anything. Rook d1, it says, is also very good. Queen c7 is not great by the opponent. 95, it actually says it's amazing. Yeah, so this is something I really like doing. I really like to give my exchanges to the opponent, especially in positions like these where it just shows my minor pieces are so good and I get rid of his only good piece in the position, which is the knight. As you guys can see, this knight really was the problem for the entire game. And... I kind of just didn't let my opponent, uh, well, my opponent didn't let me do anything about having up an exchange here, as you guys can see. In this position, as you guys can see, bishop c4 is definitely a mistake. I'm completely losing now after bishop c4. Instead, it preferred the very common collected queen to f3. Um, yeah, I was contemplating queen f3 in the game. I was also contemplating moves like the knight takes d7, but in the end, I decided to play the risky move. As you guys know, my tactics are terrible and you guys can see what happened here now b5 is amazing knight takes d7 is the only way to not lose the game Queen, king to e2 he takes my pawn in c4 which yeah didn't seem right because it allowed me to just take his rook and i'm up in exchange now and after rook c6 which is a move that gives me a free move for free it just lets me be safe now brilliant move <laughs> Queen f3 is a brilliant move, apparently, because it just consolidates everything. And again, this is just my play style. I just consolidate. I play passively. I defend. And even and against Paul Morphy, it seems like it's the better play style to go for, because I'm not out-calculating him. The one time I tried to out-calculate, I lost. But instead, I'm playing moves that just make my position safer. And in this position, ah, I should have just played rook d1. But I was scared of knight c3. Why does this not work? Knight here, rook c3. I mean, knight c3, king here, captures, captures, and I guess I have my knight still, is the idea? Let's see why this doesn't work. Rook a d1, knight c6 check, king f1, knight takes d1, rook takes d1, queen to g4. So, what? okay, so I guess the idea is I just have my knight still. I guess I shouldn't have been afraid of that. My calculation scares got me too spooked here. And instead, I just play king f1, which is a mistake. And while I am still winning in this position due to the fact that I am up material, rook e5, again, is just a move that looked cool but actually wasn't that great. Instead, it preferred pawn g4 breaking his uh, king side immediately and letting my king hop to g2 in the future, which 
is an idea and that that is good okay so rook c3 and in this position is completely equal the rest of the game doesn't really matter because it's completely equal let's see in the end if we could have tried to win oh it says queen e5 is a miss we could have played rook e1 ah attacking the weakness on e6 okay rook takes e5 is a miss and it says queen takes f6 is winning because after king takes f6 why is this winning Rook c1. Oh, I just win his pawn. Ah, so many opportunities to win. My end games are not great as well. But we were able to defend. We were able to get a draw. And when there was an opportunity to take the draw, unfortunately, I did take it. Let me know in the comments below whether or not you would have taken the draw against the 2600 rated bot. Or if you would have taken a draw against a 2600 rated opponent in real life in a situation like I did. Let me know if you like this episode of playing against a bot in this position against a world champion. And let me know in the comments below whether or not you would like to see more videos of this kind. Please leave a like and subscribe in the comments below if you enjoyed this video. And let me know if I should continue. See you in the next video. Bye.